Okay, now we're going to do our first nodal analysis problem, and we're going to use what I call basic nodal analysis. This is the form of nodal analysis that is the most complex in terms of the number of equations you need to write, but it's the simplest in terms of the procedure itself, and so it's one of the really the easiest to learn. And once we've seen an example of basic nodal analysis, we'll start looking at some shortcuts. So let's begin. And once again, this is an algorithm, it's a procedure, so let's go step by step through the procedure. So here's the last the circuit we had last time. And let's go through our procedure step by step. So first of all, we need to identify all of the nodes and choose one of them as ground. All right, now, as I said before, any node can be ground. But as it turns out, the best choice for ground is usually, not always, but usually the node that has the most number of branches connected to it, the most elements connected to it. And the reason why we like to choose the node with the most branches is because by doing so, we reduce the number of terms that are in the other equations we need to write. So any node will work, but some nodes in particular give us less complex equations. So in this case, if we look at this, we have four nodes. We've got this node along the top. That's one. Got this node here, that's two. I've got this node all along the bottom, call that three. And I've got this node that connects to this one ohm and three ohm resistor, I'll call that node four. So I look at this and I say, which node is the best choice for ground? Okay, which node has the most number of branches connected? This one's got three, this one has two, this one has three, this one has one, two, three, four. So node number three has four branches. In that case, I'm going to pick that as ground. Node three becomes ground and by inspection, it has a node voltage of zero volts. I just declare that. All right, first step. Second step, I'm going to define unknown node voltage variables at the other nodes. So for my other three nodes, this one's defined, I don't need a variable for it, but for the other three they're not defined, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call those V1, V2, and V4. Next step, I'm going to define all of my unknown branch currents. So, looking at all my branches, all of my elements that have a node on each end, what are my unknown branch currents? I'll just go ahead and define variables for those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, for this, I'm going to pick a current going this direction, 
this direction for this resistor, this direction, and this direction. And I'm going to call these currents I1, I2, I3, and I4. Now, why did I pick those particular directions? Didn't matter one bit. The directions are arbitrary. So I picked these particular directions just because. No other reason. Flip a coin. Now notice I don't need to define current directions for the current sources. Those are given. I already know what those currents are. But in these cases for the resistors, I had to include those. Now because I've done that, because I have chosen these directions, that means the pass of sign convention also tells me what the voltage drop across each of those resistors needs to be. So notice for each resistor, I'm now following the pass of sign convention. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative according to the direction of the current that I chose. Now one of the most common mistakes I'll see people do when they do nodal analysis is they will not write down these positives and negatives and they will get confused about which end is positive, which end is negative, and then they will make us some kind of sign error, write something backwards. You've got to be very careful about that. When you're first learning nodal analysis, my advice is Draw all of the directions of the currents and all of the polarities, the, po the positives of the pluses and minuses of the voltage drops very explicitly. Okay. Next step. Let's write a KCL equation for all of the unknown nodes. So we're going to write a KCL equation for every node except ground. You do not write an equation for ground. Ground is defined. We already know what the voltage is. It's zero volts. I don't need an equation for it. If I were to write an equation for it, it would be a dependent equation to be redundant, be useless to you. Okay, so let's go through, and I'm going to write the KCL, but really what I'm going to do is write the KCL, and then I'm also going to write the Ohm's Law. So let's do my KCL. So I've got nodes V1, V2, and V4. For node 1, 10 amps going in is equal to I1 plus I2. For node 2, I2 going in plus 2 amps is equal to I3. And then for Node 4, I1 is equal to I4. So those are my KCL equations. And last step, I need to write Ohm's law for every resistor. But I'm going to write Ohm's law in terms of the node voltages. Notice I didn't define a variable for the voltage drop. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to write these voltages in terms of the node voltages. So for Ohm's law, I'll get the following. Here, I1 is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by 1, and that voltage is V1 minus V4 over 1.
for I2, I2 is equal to V1 minus V2 over 2. For I3, I3 is equal to V2 minus 0 over 10. And V4 is equal, pardon me, I4 is equal to V4 minus 0 over 3. So notice what I did here. That is Ohm's law but I'm writing the voltage as a difference between two node voltages. I'm not trying to define an extra variable for the voltage drop. I'll just use the node voltages. Okay. Now, we've written all of our equations. Now, what is our goal? What are we trying to accomplish here as we solve these equations? It's very simple. Our goal is to find all the node voltages. That's what we're trying to calculate, the node voltages, because if you can calculate the node voltages, you can find any voltage or any current in the circuit. So that's what we're doing here as we write these equations. Okay. Well, what have I got here? I've got, all right, one, two, three unknown node voltages, one, two, three, four unknown currents. So I've got seven variables, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equations. Seven variables, seven equations. Put it into Mathematica. I can now solve. So our last step. Solve for all our node voltages. And at this point, you can just take those seven equations and put them right into Mathematica. Hit Shift Enter, Solve, and what you're going to get is that V1 is equal to 35 volts, V2 is equal to 32.5 volts, V4 is equal to 26.25 volts, I1 is equal to I4 is equal to 8.75 amps, I2 is equal to 1.25 amps, and I3 is equal to 3.25 amps. And there's your answer. Here are our node voltages. We also, of course, get those currents as well. Mathematica solves for everything at once. And here's our solution. So you notice, no excess, no redundant equations. No excess variables that we really needed outside of what I specified for the currents and for the node voltages. So this is a pretty elegant way, but it turns out we can apply a couple of shortcuts and actually make this problem even simpler than this. Because right now you look at this and you're saying, well, Dr. Holman, it's easier than the brute force, but there still seems to be a lot of equations. Well, good point. What can we do to try to maybe reduce some of these equations and make this problem even easier? Well, let's look at that next time and let's look at a couple of shortcuts we can apply to nodal analysis.